All right, so now that we know how our bits for our alarming work with our file bit comparison to get our FOF working on our PLC, right? The PLC end of things, we wanna actually get the PLC stuff working with the HMI. Now, how do we do that? We use an ALMD, which is a, a digital alarm, or we can use an ALMA, which is an analog alarm. In our environment, we're using all digital because we're using all binary, right? So tying these bits in here, right, exactly like we showed, what I've done is I went ahead and added some programming. So we're going to be quickly showing how an ALMD instruction works because it is a lot. There's a lot to describe in that. I want to keep these videos short to the point. So if you have not watched the videos leading up to this, please go back and watch those videos because you're going to be uh, not getting the, the solid learning you should really get from all of what we've done so far. So uh, with that being said, what I've done is I've added in the alarm program, I've added some extra routines for the alarms, which is like general system alarms, the premix alarms, the batching alarms, and the finished product alarms. Now the, uh, and I've done this to segment each section of the program so that somebody can, that is coming behind me or somebody has to troubleshoot or somebody that has to, or even myself has to come back and look at this, I can easily determine where the alarm is in the system at that current time. So instead of having all the alarms based up in, based up in the control section up here, we can have the alarms in the alarm program and have them all just like this, right? So I went ahead and took the liberty of adding some controls to save, save us some time to add us some controls that we know that we need to put in there. For instance, for this instance, it would be the manual control for the pump. And the in this case, the operator turned the manual controls on and they did not turn on AV01 or AV03. Then it would do a pump manual request alarm. The same thing for AV02 or, or pump two, then AV02 and AV04. Either one of these is not on, it's going to trigger the alarm. It's gonna hold that alarm on, just like we showed up in this section over here. So if I were to turn that on, it would trigger that alarm. Now I don't have this currently, you don't have any alarms triggering in the alarm banner because we don't have anything programmed, but I wanna show you that alarm actually working because we don't have either one of these open, right? So why are they in parallel instead of in series? Now, the simple fact of it is because if either one of these could potentially stop this from running. So in the instance of, if you look in the controls, in the instance of this, either one of these can stop this from running. So I have to, we, we have to put this in the instance of either or could make this alarm happen. So with that said, we'll go ahead and turn this off so that it cuts that alarm off and let's get to the ALMD instruction. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and grab this bit. I'm just gonna grab the text from it, right? The, the tag name. Then I wanna come in here and actually this is the way I, I did everything before. I wanna show you how this was actually done. So I come over here and tied that actual tag into this bit right which you can see did trigger the alarm so uh, we need to actually reset that real quick so let's just do a reset so we'll come over here to our uh, fof routine and let's do an hmi reset do the hmi reset and now the system is back working so you do know the alarm is working and that's the way it triggers again we went through the way it works so again if you need to go back and watch those videos, please do so. So when it comes down to it, this is triggering this alarm, right? So if, if the operator tells, tries to start the pump number one manually, right? And AVO one is not on and AVO three is not on. Let's go ahead and verify those, right? So if AVO one is not on or AVO three is not on, then it will trigger that alarm. And let's come back into here, get back into our alarm monitoring. Then it will trigger the alarm. Now, what I want to do now is grab this information. I want to grab this bit and go over here and program an ALMD. Come over here to our ALMD programming and we'll grab the first bit and paste that in there. 
Now just like this, so let me actually blow this up so you can see it better, right? So now that's easily legible. So let's now let's get into actually adding our ALMD, where it's at, how to use it, and get it functioning, right? So real quick, I wanna come over here and show you this. So on the top bar, if you go up to alarms, you have your ALMD and you have your ALMA. One is an analog alarm, one is a digital alarm. Digital obviously is going to be the binary, we're going to grab that. Okay, so in this instance we need to give it a name. We want our naming culture to be roughly about the same, so I'm gonna call it A for the ALMD. And then, just to keep it kind of short and sweet for the acronym, and then we'll call it batching alarm alarm 001 <clears throat> so we'll keep it just that simple now we have this down here where we can trigger it to automatically open if we want to to open up the configuration but let's not do that let's create the alarm okay now in this instance what we want to do is just we'll, we'll come in here and put a bunch of zeros in here it really doesn't matter um, we're not going to use our system just like this so programming resets and stuff of that nature. What we're going to do is we're going to configure it up here. Now, I want to talk about a few things in here real quick to kind of give you a, uh, a basic understanding of the way this digital alarm system works. All right, so this is the, again, the way we specifically talk from our PLC to our HMI using factory. This is one way to do it very easily and fluently without having to do, um, well, I would say, there's two ways to do alarming in Factory Talk Studio, um, SE, side edition, right? So the most prominent way is going to be this ALMD. Now you can do this um, this way, or you can do it another way, but again, when it comes down to it, you can do um, several different ways. In this instance, we're gonna use the ALMD function, but this is going to be the way we communicate to our from our PLC to our HMI. And this is going to be where we're using this screen right here and the top header bar. Okay, and again, if you need to reference those videos where we made those, please do so. Um, but again, when it comes down to it, to save time and effort, the severity is what basically there's a, a color scheme on the back of that, that uh, HMI screen that gives the severity and what color it is, right? So if we wanna have the severity, I like to have it anywhere between eight. If it's important, 800 or 1,000. 1,000 would be red. Now, um, the minimum duration is like, how long does it have to be on before this happens, right? Uh, I like to trigger that at zero. The shelf duration, again, I don't mess with that. Maximum shelf duration. That's shelving is if you want to put it on the shelf and you want to say, okay, we want to kind of ignore this right now. Um, but in this instance, we're not going to do that. Now, what I will say too, is we need to make a tag for the text. So there's two ways to give the text that you want to show and represent to the HMI. You can merely come over here and just type the text if you want. Like say, for instance, we said uh, pump, one manually turned on without the valves on. We could just type the text and it just be just like that, right? We could just type it and it do that and it could be completely fine. Or if you want to associate tags with this, you can create a new tag and you can say this would be a string, right? So we'll call this a string and we'll, we'll make a, a dimensions. We'll basically just make 480 of these because we have 480 alarms um, when it comes down to it. So that's what we're gonna do is we'll, we'll call this uh, alarm, alarm text. Real simple, real easy. We'll call that alarm text. And this is not giving me, so I need to, to select my first one. Now, this is going to be my first alarm, so let, let's keep it in order. Let's keep it organized, right? And let's do that. Let's do the first one. 
and then that's what we can do so now we can remove this and then put this up up here so now we can just put the alarm name and the alarm right here so now we can use this text so what we can do is the cool thing about this now is we go over here we know we need to add our text in here we need to go into this text right so right now it's still going to read zero so if we take this and we go over to our tag structure and we just paste it in there and this would be alarm one this is alarm text so now we have all these texts that we can put our alarms in right so this is the data behind it um, this is the length we're in edit tag right now so the best way to do is go back to monitor tag and that way it would show you what you can put in all right so what we want to do for the first one is we want to put uh, pump one requ uh, man really requested without valves without all valves open and what we can do is actually have actually let's make sure manually so then you just put your text in there and I wish I could blow this up but again when it comes down to it that's this is kind of the the font size so what we can do is copy this and put this in here and the next one would be pump two because we have three alarms programmed right now right so we're gonna have pump two and then we'll have the next one as pump three so this one would be pump three now this shows you the reason I broke this down a little bit is so when you scroll down and you see this you can see this is the data that it it actually puts in there this is just the way the string the text goes and, and actually shows you and it gives you the length right so you do have a uh, a certain number or length you can put in there so uh, with that being said now we can come over here and when we see this pop up you can see now it's going to say pump one manually request open all right are, are manually requested without all the valves open now this is what's referencing the first thing right here right so you can easily call this is the alarm name this is going to be the alarm condition the alarm input value and then the text so what we want is we want to come in here and get the alarm text that we put in there so first we need to scroll down here first the alarm text add that that's going to pull the t the tag right so this is going to pull this very first tag so we'll apply that and then we'll go ahead and do this and let me show you this working so that you can see it fluently working so let me go ahead and go into the program or go into the HMI I'm gonna request this on and then my alarm should pop up just like it did right here see the alarm pop up and now if I went to my alarm banner it tells me right here that my alarm happened it tells me the alarm name it gives me the the date and time it gives me everything I need to know and again I can I can get these conditions out right now uh, when it comes down to it you've seen this on the top header as well and we can extend this out so that it gives a, a much better um, you know viewpoint but when it comes down to it this is part of testing this is why we do what we do so you can see right now it's in alarm so no matter what I do until I get it out of an alarm it's not going to actually stop or it's not going to, to go away so at first we need to stop it and we need to have a reset in here we don't have a, a reset remember we put the reset in the actual controls so currently it's still going to stay right here because of the simple fact of the alarming is still latched in now if you recall in the FOF we had this alarm reset that we put in and let's blow this up a little bit sorry about that wrong wrong blow that up a little bit so we have this alarm reset we need to actually add this into our HMI 
So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to go to my screen. I'm going to go to my bottom footer bar. Actually, the best place to put this is probably the bottom footer bar. So let's actually go and put it in the bottom footer bar and add that. Actually, for the simple uh, simplicity sake of what we're doing, let's come back and add that later so we don't make this video real long. If we reset it right now and we reset the, the bits, you'll see that the alarm now goes away. All right, so the alarm is now happy. It's actually, and then we can, what we can do is come over here and reset, clear everything, and make sure we have that reset. It's acknowledged, everything is good, and everything is clear. We refresh up here, everything is fine. So this being said, that's the, the way in AMD works, right? This is one way in AMD comes in and works. And I wanted to show you a, a couple different patterns and a couple different ways this works, but this is very simply, in the simplest form, the way it could work, right? Now again, this is giving a good text format. This is giving uh, the way everything works, but you see now the reason why we used uh, the screens we used and going in and adding the alarms and stuff of that nature, right? So when we added the alarm screen, this is the reason we, we chose to to set this up and do it a certain way so that we can see the alarms, right? These automatically pop up and automatically populate with the ALMD instruction. So with all that being said, I want to go ahead and, you know, kind of give you a rough implementation of, of how an ALMD works, how one functions, how everything, you know, ties in with the system we've built so far and kind of give you a brief illustration of how this works. Again, we're not talking about shelving. We're not talking about different things like that. We're talking about how do we functionally get it working first? What is it? How do we get it working? And how do we get our PLC talking to our HMI, right? So with all this being said, this is giving you the foundational understanding of how an ALMD works, right? Very basic, very functional, easy to use without any complexity, because the more complex you get, the harder it is to understand the basic foundation of the information you're getting. So hopefully that was a very helpful video. And with all that said, we'll see you guys on the next one.